Hello and welcome to all our viewers. The whole world is facing an unprecedented economic, medical and humanitarian crisis of the coronavirus pandemic. Economies are shattered and more damage is yet to come. Everyone is looking for a solution at this critical juncture. What is the option before world economies? How deep is the crisis and is there any solution at all? To discuss all that and much more, today we are joined by Dr. Geeta Gopinath, Chief Economist of the International Monetary Fund. Thanks for talking to us, Dr. Gopinath. You have projected 1.9% GDP growth for Indian economy. Uh, aren't you too optimistic about the growth of Indian economy? And have you taken into account the extension of lockdown that happened the day uh, last week when you announced the, the GDP forecast? So let me just uh, be clear about the numbers. So 1.9% represents our number for the fiscal year of 2021. If we were talking about the calendar year, which is what every other number for other countries refers to, on a calendar year basis, our growth for India is 0.5%. So it is a substantial slowdown for a country that's expected to grow at 6, 6.5%. You know, coming down to 0.5% is, is a big hit. When you, your question about the extension of the lockdown. So, in fact, when we created our forecast, we worked on the assumption that the lockdown would be extended. So, in that sense, we already have that in our baseline. Now, that said, I think there is a lot of uncertainty how how intensive the, break, the lockdown will be, how long this containment period will continue, the implications for different activities. So, just as it's the case for many other countries in the world, I think downside risks to our forecast are uh, are are high. And uh, India Central Bank has taken a number of steps from the last since the lockdown started. Twice it has reduced key interest rates. Do you think it's enough to bring the liquidity into the economy to infuse as they are hoping for the, these steps? It's not just that they've cut interest rates, which of course helps, but I think the other measures that they've taken in terms of providing uh, liquidity through these long-term refinancing operations. Uh, that's one big measure they've taken. They also are trying to help both borrowers and lenders. So, you know, there's loan forbearance for borrowers and then some regulatory uh, retrieval for creditors. Uh, and at the same time, they're trying to get credit to reach the MSME sector. So, I, you know, all these other pieces of the uh, interventions that they have done would, would certainly help the economy. And as uh, we were talking from the last few days, something happened over the weekend. India has revised the FDI policy and China has opposed it. Do you think India is currently right in doing that or will India get hurt by this step? Well, uh, Smith, I don't want to talk about any particular country's policies on this matter. Our view, of course, is that this is a time when uh, countries, of course, have to take care of the health crisis at home. Uh, and that is their number one priority and protecting their uh, their people and their firms. These are important aspects of it. But we are very, you know, we are very clear that it's very important that the world does not become protectionist or doesn't deglobalize. And again, I'm not talking about any particular move by any country. I'm just talking about the more general, uh, uh, you know, principle that we have to make sure that we don't move to a situation where you know, the world deglobalizes because there have been lots of productivity gains that have come around from countries engaging in global trade and global capital flows. And we should we should maintain that. And Indian government has also taken steps for poor. 1.7 lakh crore rupees of package has been announced. Uh, do you think is it enough or you think more should be done for the poor of the country? So we certainly, we certainly welcome the measures the, the government has done on the fiscal side in terms of targeted transfers, both in-kind and cash transfers to low-income households and also to uh, help you know, pay the wages of low-income workers. Uh, our view is that more can be done, that there's a scope to do more given the scale of the crises. Uh, you know, more should be done. And uh, you know, I would expect that the Indian government will be doing more uh, in the coming days. And also another stimulus package is being talked about in India. If that comes, uh, what is your expectation? Uh, how should that go? Now again, so I think when you're thinking about the stimulus, you have to think about the priorities for the country. The number one priority is on the health sector and on saving people's lives. Uh, and for that, that will require spending both on you know, medical facilities, protective equipment, testing. Uh, more generally, this is not just for now, but 
in the medium term and the long term. India needs to do a lot of investment in its health capacity, and this would be a good place to uh, to spend money. The second aspect is on helping the people who've lost their jobs because of this crisis, no fault of theirs, uh, firms that are not getting customers anymore, again, because of the great lockdown that the world is in. And to support both of them is, again, uh, is another should be another priority for the government. All of this will in, imply large fiscal spending. So it's also very important to be you know, transparent about where the money is being spent and, as we say, to keep the receipts. And the third... Uh, Big third big block is on uh, monetary policy and RBI policy in terms of providing liquidity, uh, loan forbearance. Uh, and again, there you might have to keep in mind that regulation and supervision should also be paying close attention to what's happening with non-performing loans and, uh, and its kind.